Something really cool is about to happen. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagas. We're talking about an annular solar eclipse, aka the Ring of Fire eclipse. It's set to take center stage on October 14th. In this video, we're going to break down the timeline and who has the opportunity to see the best part, the main event of this eclipse. You may remember back in 2017 when we had that total solar eclipse. Those glasses were all the rage. Again, this is the eclipse where you need to have that protection to view it safely. We're going to show you another way, a DIY version to safely view this eclipse. If what happens in 2017 happens again, they were very hard to come by. Also, stick around to the end of the video. We're going to talk about what's actually happening with an eclipse like this and when an even bigger, better eclipse, if you can believe it, comes around. We're going to have that towards the end of the video. Here we go. I first want to show you the overall path here to show you the perspective of how this enters and exits. And then we're going to take a statewide view from the perception of the moon's shadow being cast on the Earth. So you can see city by city and look at the timeline. So there you go. The western United States, we are going to be the golden area to see this, specifically Oregon into Nevada, Utah, parts of New Mexico and Arizona, and then right smack dab on the southeast corner of Texas. That's where the moon's shadow kind of exits back through the Gulf of Mexico, again, starting on the morning of October 14th. So I wanted you to put that path into your brain because now we are going to go from the moon's shadow perspective so it's kind of a weird view here but this is the shadow this is where we get totality right here this is the pacific ocean here is the coast of oregon and then here are starting the, the coastal towns of oregon that are going to be up so again this is kind of the how the earth shadow is looking down on the earth and i'll continue to point that out with the arrow there to show you because it is kind of a weird view here but for perspective again here is northern california here is oregon medford eugene this is when we are in totality that is nine o'clock in the morning 918 that's when we will see totality again of this eclipse as it moves in from the pacific northwest down into us in nevada so now here is the oregon nevada line this is the moon shadow again being cast on the earth kind of giving the sun that ring of fire look with the edges not completely being covered not like a total solar eclipse the edges of the sun will still be seen so you need to keep your glasses on at all times nonetheless deep creek nevada we are up lee nevada las vegas for perspective we are out of totality you will see that pac-man version again kind of like the moon shadow or the moon taking a bite out of the sun moon shadow then continues to move into utah we are stopping this now at 10 29 in the morning this is mountain time Capitol Reef National Park. It's a great spot to be. It's a great spot to be for this eclipse. Hanging out right in through here. We will see totality just before 1030 in the morning mountain time. Then the Earth's shadow continues to move towards the four corners. This is 1033 in the morning mountain time now. Completely over the corner of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. We'll continue to take this out further. The big cities, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, we're up closer to about 1030-ish. We are completely entrenched in the moon shadow as of 10 37 in the morning mountain time we'll continue to watch the moon shadow work towards the texas border towards about 10 40 ish we're stopping the timeline here at 10 41 in the morning mountain time most of this is still hanging out in new mexico roswell what's going on we are in totality as well we will see the full effect of this eclipse it will move deeper into texas by the time we get towards 11 45 we're now into central time so this is 11 45 central time midland and odessa we will see totality same for us in san angelo just after 11 47 closer to 11 50 and then san antonio we are in totality as well we will see that full ring of fire effect in san antonio in parts of southeast texas and again eventually exiting towards corpus christi stopping the timeline at 11 57 in the morning on october 14th there you go corpus christi kingsville into beeville we are seeing totality here through the first couple of minutes of the lunch hour and then you see it there 1201 in the early afternoon central time we will see the exit and the conclusion of at least if you're on land of this annular solar eclipse. All right, now let's head outside for some DIY fun. First and foremost, before we get into this video, never, ever, ever observe the sun with the unaided eye. You need either approved solar glasses or a device like I'm about to show you. In order to make this device, just a few common household items. We're looking for scissors, some tape, 
A little glue stick will work just fine as well. Aluminum foil, a piece of computer paper, and of course, a box. So the box is the main part of this device. This is the bigger box here, but later on in this video, I'll show you a more handheld version as well. So stick around for the video for that. Also, if you find this content helpful, hit that subscribe button for me. Give it a thumbs up as well. All right, so in this, for the sake of time, I've already cut two holes. This is what you need to do. Cut two holes into the long end of the box. This is gonna be so that you can look through one of them and then let the sunlight, so the, you can see the eclipse, come through the other. The next thing you need to do, take a piece of aluminum foil and then we are going to tape it over one end of the box or one end of that open mark right there. So we're gonna use this one here. This is where the sunlight is going to come through. Get real close on, you just need a little bit of tape, just like that. We're gonna tape all ends of this so that it, the wind doesn't blow it off. All sides just like that. All right, now taking either a small nail or a pencil, we're just gonna poke a teeny tiny hole right on through, just like that. And that is where the sun is gonna come through. Believe it or not, that is the device, that is the part there that is critical for this. This is where your eye goes, just like that. All right, so now on the inside of the box, this is also important. You're gonna open it back up, any box will do, and you're gonna take that computer paper, just like this, a nice little white piece of computer paper. This is gonna be your projector screen. We're gonna tape it before we get it in there, just like that, and then tape it right to the back of the box. And this is what you're actually going to see the eclipse on. The sunlight is gonna come right through that little hole. It's gonna be projected on our white paper in the back, just like that, and that is where you're going to see the eclipse. Make sure you have enough glue or tape on it. I obviously did not put enough on to keep it there. Now this is really, really important. You're not looking directly up at the sun like this. You are keeping the sun to the back at all times. What you're wa wanting to do is, this little hole right here is gonna be over your shoulder. The sun is gonna be to your back over the shoulder. Again, you're never looking at that sun. And then you're gonna look right on through the hole just like that that you cut for your eye and then you will see the solar eclipse displayed on that white piece of computer paper so pretty cool now that's a bigger box of course if you want a more handheld version you can use a cereal box a lot of people eat cereal for breakfast myself included sometimes anyway you're gonna grab a little box at the top same deal cut two openings so this is where you would pour the cereal out one is gonna be for your foil one is going to be for your eye to be held. Look, if you look deep there, I already have the piece of white paper glued there, so that one's not gonna move. But then what we're gonna do, same deal, cut a piece of foil big enough to cover that opening, just like that. And make sure that it is nice and tight and then take your pencil or nail just like we did before little poke and then just like what before is you're going to keep your the back the sun is at your back this is over the shoulder so that the sunlight is coming through that little hole and then you just look in the back just like that and then you will see the solar eclipse projected right onto the back of the box. All right, we are back inside, ready to break down what is actually going on with this solar eclipse. So how we get these is the moon moves in between the earth and the sun. It is the moon's shadow that is actually being cast on the earth. Now, of course, the moon is not as big as the sun, but from our vantage point, it looks like they're about the same size as it moves in between the two. In an annular solar eclipse, though, it does not cover the moon does not cover the entirety of the sun like in a total solar eclipse this is why it is called the ring of fire eclipse because it leaves that little ring of the sun exposed you see the dark center of the moon taking up most of the sun but the outer edges still shine through that is why you need to keep your glasses on for the entirety of this eclipse in a total solar eclipse where you get the earth or the sun's corona kind of shining through 
you can take it off for that short time when it's in totality. Not this time, though. So again, it's important to make sure you're keeping your glasses or using that viewing device that we just went through and built the entire time and certainly do not look directly at it. Nonetheless, the outer edges of the sun are going to be visible still. It's a really, really cool sight. And as we just talked about, you need to keep your glasses on during the entire event. Now, during a solar eclipse where you can remove your glasses for a very short time is in a total solar eclipse. We had one of these back in 2017. It's coming back in 2024. I mentioned earlier in the video that we would end with an even bigger eclipse and here you go the 2024 solar eclipse the path of totality enters from mexico goes through texas into arkansas parts of missouri into illinois carbondale actually got 2017 we're going to see totality again in 2024 this goes through parts of ohio indiana pennsylvania new york into vermont new hampshire maine and then into southeast canada if you are in totality, this is where you get that iconic diamond ring look where you get that flare of light just before the moon completely moves over the sun. Again, from our vantage point. And that's where you can take the glasses off for a few minutes as long as totality continues and you can see the sun's atmosphere, the sun's corona, that wispy white in the iconic videos. And that's, again, when you can remove your glasses only for that time because the sun is not out. It is completely dark in the middle of the afternoon or in the morning, depending upon what time you're viewing it. But that is that once-in-a-lifetime event. The U.S. is getting very, very lucky, again, having one in 2017, having one in 2024. If you want to see, if you want to use those glasses those eclipse glasses again now is a good time to order them it's a two for one special pretty much because you can order them for the 23 annular eclipse and then the 24 solar eclipse now just because we're not getting totality just like with the annular eclipse we are going to have kind of the sun look like pac-man a little bit the moon taking a bite out of the sun so down towards virginia we'll have an 80 percent eclipse it's going to look more like that where the arrow is down towards florida it'll be 60 percent eclipse and then it'll be more like 80 percent towards parts of kansas and nebraska and then just 40 percent of the moon kind of taking a bite out of the sun for those areas again you will need those glasses on at all times but it's just for that couple of minute stretch where the moon is completely over the sun from our perspective, you can take off the glasses. That's in 24, not for the annular in 23. Glasses on at all time. I've said it a lot, but believe me, there's going to be a lot of people that take glasses off or don't look at the sun with that extra protection. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay up to date on weather information or astronomical fun stuff like this really cool stuff you have to hit subscribe please do that and we will catch you next time